All right, so on this episode, we're going to talk about um, TIG 5G. Uh, and question number six, it says that a relation contains the points given and which statement accurately describes this uh, relation. First off, I want to look at my points and see if it is a relation. Um, I want to see if my y, X value repeats. I have one, two, three, four, and five. My X value does not repeat, so this is a function. This is a function. So I can eliminate the answer choice F, and I can eliminate the answer choice H because it says it's not a function. Now, both G and J says the relation represents Y as a function of X. Okay, now let's look at our second statement. So this is true, this is true. Our second, second statement and the first one says because one value of Y is associated with two values of X. While that is a true statement, that's not enough to say that it is a function. Okay. Um, what is enough to say that it is a function is in J because each value of X is associated with a single value of Y. Now, that includes G. So this actually, J includes the comments of G. You have one value of Y associated with each value of X. Um, think about Y is equal to X squared. Um, that is a function. Uh, remember, function is defined by your input. For every input, there is exactly one output. Okay? So J is our answer choice. Um, now, number seven, uh, TIG 6A. Uh, the sculpture is in the shape of a cylinder. And the cylinder has a diameter of 12 feet, so D is equal to 12. And we have H. We don't know what H is. Um, which equation could be used to find V, the volume, of the cylinder in cubic feet. So volume of cylinder is equal to BH, which is pi r squared H. So now I need to find my diameter. 12 divided by 2 will give me 6. So volume is equal to pi 6 squared times H. All right, well, let's see which one of those matches our answer choice. Um, our answer choice happens to be right there at A. So it's really that simple, quick, and easy. Um, I will go over number eight in the next video. I will see you then. All right, so I'm going to go over number eight, uh, TIG 8.C. Um, Julie started with 20 pieces of gum and gave away eight pieces. This is really easy. So 20 pieces of gum minus X pieces. That's Julie. And then Conrad started with 35 pieces of gum. So 35. And then gave away uh, twice as many as Julie did. So that's going to be minus 2X. It's Conrad. And we want to know how many pieces of gum did Julie give away if they had the same number of pieces of gum. So really we're looking for X. So we're going to set these as um, equations and equal to each other. And then I'm going to solve for X. So I'm going to combine that. That becomes 2X. So that's 20 plus x is equal to 35. Subtract 20, subtract 20. That's going to give me x is equal to 15, which is my answer choice, h. So really quite for, straightforward and simple and easy. Um, number 9. Um, number 9 says each, so we have a triangular prism, and each base of the container is an equilateral triangle with the dimensions shown. Uh, the container has a height of 15 centimeters. What is the lateral surface area of the container uh, in square centimeters? So that's lateral area is going to be equal to pH. So that P representing the perimeter. So 6 times 3 gives us 18 times the height, which is 15, which will give us a total of 270 centimeters squared that easy. Number 10, um, the trapezoid PR, QRS is rotated 180 degrees about the origin to form the new trapezoid. Um, let's look at our statements and it wants to say which of the statements is true. Again, make sure that you are paying attention to whether or not they're asking if it's true or not true because they really like to ask those questions. So this is we're looking for true. The sum of the angle measures of the trapezoid is 180 degrees less than the sum of the angles of the measures of the trapezoid. The <coughs> image, that's false. 
uh, the trapezoid is not congruent, that's again false. When, uh, whenever we're transforming it or translating it, all of the interior angles will be congruent. Uh, the area of the trapezoid is less than the area of the uh, image. Um, that again is false. Um, the last one, it says the angle measures of the trapezoid are equal to the corresponding angle measures of the image. Yes, that is true. That is the only possible answer choice. Uh, this is a real easy one. Okay, real quick and easy. Uh, what is the function represented with this graph? So I need to have my y-intercept, my b, because we're these are all in the form of our slope-intercept. Y is equal to mx plus b. So I need to find my b value, which that is my y-intercept. If I look there, my b is equal to negative 2. So now I need, just need to find my slope. I'm going to pick two perfect points. I have a point here, and then the point there is 0, 2. So I'm going to go up 1. So I go up 1, up 1 unit, and then I'm going to go right 1, 2, 3, 4. So right 4 units. That means that my slope is equal to 1 fourth. So my equation is going to be 1 fourth x plus, minus 2, which is my answer choice B. All right? Uh, I don't want these videos to get too long for each set, so I'm going to... Okay, number 12. Um, an employee put a $5,000 in a retirement account that offers 9% interest compounded annually. That means we're going to look at our formula chart, and we're going to write our formula for compound interest, which is A is equal to P times 1 plus R to the T power. Um, the amount is closest... Which amount... Uh, if the employee makes no additional uh, deposits or withdrawal, which amount is closest to the interest the employee will earn at the end of five years? So our P is going to be equal to 5,000. Our R is going to be the uh, 9 in decimal form, so that's going to be point zero point zero nine, And then our T is going to be the time in years, so that's 5. And we're going to plug this in. So A is equal to 5,000 times 1.09 to the fifth power. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put that in my calculator. I'm going to have to do it on my 5,000 times 1.09. Whoops. To the power of... Being really slow. Five thousand times one point oh nine to the power of five. It's gonna give me A is equal to seven thousand six hundred and ninety-three dollars and thirteen cents. Now that's none of those amounts there. But wait, it says what is the amount of the interest? So remember, this amount includes both the interest earned and the initial, the principal. So I need to subtract 5,000 from that, and that will give me my answer choice, J. All right? Um, that was a little off, 13. You know, that's close enough. 13, 12. All right? Let's see, number 13. Um, in each diagram, line K is parallel to line L. Um, and T intersects the lines K and L. Which statement is true? We're looking for true. Okay, so let's see. The value of X is 79 because the two uh, angles shown are congruent. Now, let's think about our rules of um, lines. So, we have inside these, we know that these two angles here are supplementary. Uh, we know that they won't be congruent. We know that 79 and this angle here would be congruent. Um, I'm going to do colors. Let's do colors. 
We know that this angle here and 79 will be congruent because of alternate or because of vertical angles. We know that x and this angle here are going to be equal to each other because again vertical angles. And that would make 79 um Hmm. Let's see, now that might be true, maybe, question. Um, number B is, um, this, this looks true. I'm going to say that's true for right now. Let's come back. Let's continue forward. So X is the value of 101 because the, show, the angle sh two angles shown in the diagram are supplementary. Well, that's definitely false. Okay, um, X is greater than 90 because the two angles shown in each diagram are obtuse angles. No, that's false. Um, and D it says X is 11 because the two angles in the ang diagram are shown are complementary. Again, that's false because we know that those angles are congruent. We know that X and 79 are congruent angles. So the answer choice is going to be A. Uh, I'm going to go over number four, 14 in the next video. See you.